Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to uh, Dumb SEO Questions, episode 435. Uh, each week we gather here to uh, review the questions and answers given on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight we have uh, uh, David Razan. David is a leading internet marketer. He's based in West Sussex in the sunny south of uh, the UK. And uh, um, Masataki Wasa. Um, Masataki is based in Wimbledon. Um, he's also a Google product expert in the AdSense uh, community. And Tim Kappa is CEO of onlineownership.com. Com. He um, is also a Google product expert in the Google My Business uh, community. All right, let's have a look at, we've got nine questions tonight. Let's look at the first one. Um, this one, uh, Yusuf Zaduri, um, it's titled, I just want to know if a long tail keyword has a different order. Um, Yusuf went in to say, uh, hey guys, sorry if it's a dumb question. I just want to know if, if a long tail keyword has a different order. For example, personalized necklace in gold, gold personalized ne necklace, um, and personalized hold next necklace. Are these the same as it seems uh, so on the search volume? They have the same exact figure. Um, if so, when optimizing for one variation, will it automatically cover uh, the other um, variants? Um, or um, do you have to mix and match a few of them to cover the variants? Any help would be greatly appreciated. Don't fight over these. There's, there's, there's plenty of them to go around. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, try to get through this without spluttering and coughing. But uh, yeah, um, I think Google will probably be quite happy um, working out that these things, personalized necklace in gold, etc., cetera, are uh, one and the same or very, very similar. Um, so I don't think it's a, a case of having to do a page for personalized necklace in gold, uh, another one for gold personalized necklace, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think we've gone past this, uh, one-on-one, -on -one, um, idea of, uh, of, of key phrases some time ago. Um, it's back to the usual advice of writing some good content about gold personalized necklaces and as you write it you'll be it will be easy enough to to put in the the variation should you be so keen to uh, to write those uh, variations or whether you just want to stick to uh, what comes out as you write um, so Yes, um, don't, you know, if, if you're looking at them and saying, okay, the search volume for each of them is 100, which, which, do, I, um, which, which do I choose? Well, um, you, you look at what is it? What is this product that you're, um, that you're trying to sell? Um, and, um, you know, how, how do you describe it? How is it described? Um, I write about it. Just go for what it is. Um, you know, there clearly isn't, isn't any uh, advantage to be had um, from picking the one that has the most uh, the most searches. Uh, and even then, that's not um, not the the only factor that you should be looking at with a with a key phrase. So, um, I would. Um, 
I would let Google's understanding of your content um, um, do the trick for you rather than sweat over which order to to uh, to write them in. Thank you, David. One thing I wonder, I mean, it is just slightly off tangent, is I wonder if Google will rewrite the title depending on the query. So you, know, you have different word order combinations. Um, if the components are present in the um, text, I'm just wondering if Google might rearrange the words in the title. It's been doing that for a while now, hasn't it? Yeah, um, it, it could do. Um, but do we know or have we got a, a good idea that uh, if Google has to re reorganize, rearrange these for any reason, that uh, that, that will have a, um, a negative effect on the uh, SEO for that page or the performance for that page? Yeah, I think... I think David Wright in saying that, um, you know, right as it makes sense. I think mean, it comes down to that. And then uh, to a certain extent, Google will, will rewrite the title to fit the query. Um, so in a sense, it's probably not something that I'd overthink and stick to the basic principles and ensuring that um, that the copy reads well and it doesn't sort of feel forced or sort of kind of staccato um, style. Okay, before I move on, I must um, point out Michael Martin is is uh, uh, answer. Um, uh, it's um, it, it's just wonderful the the expertise of the, of the guys at, um, and and girls who uh, um, front up uh, every day and answer uh, um, questions on uh, the WCA questions Facebook group. Um, yeah, it's just. Uh, just wonderful to be a part of this this group. Um, and um, do we have any more from anybody? No. Okay. Let's let's uh, move on to the next. Um, it's titled. Um, it's from Afifa Ansari, and it's titled "I Have Done Everything I Could." Um, I think that went on to say, hey guys, uh, I took suggestions of yours for search engine optimization for this page. <coughs> That's https full colon slash slash pickyourtrail.com slash packages slash Dubai. This page was ranked in uh, ranking in the 11th position and came on at the ninth position for three days. And then again, gone down to 11th and still ranking in the same position. It's been two months now and I've done everything I, I could have done here, checking the competitor for Dubai package. My page has got a higher word count, higher authority backlinks and important information. This page um, is a transaction, so uh, uh, a con um, uh, Content doesn't matter uh, as much for the user for users, but it, it is important for Google, and that's why everyone has used it. Now, please suggest what can I do here? I would love your valuable selections, suggestions. I should say my target is to rank in the top five.
Mm. I mean, didn't we have a look at this page mm. before? Um, but one thing yeah. that strikes me is that, I mean, the page seems to serve two purposes. And that sort of doesn't make sense to me. One, you have, on one hand, you have sort of huge amount of information about general information about packages to Dubai from India, you know, that for, for which you have to click more to expand that text, huge block of text, um, very small font, bit difficult to read. Um, and then you have, um, you know, package offers, so there's a transactional element of the page. I personally think that those are two separate things. I'm not sure why you have them on the same page. Because if I'm looking for a package to Dubai and I want to compare prices and what the package includes, then I want to see that information, not general information about you know, Dubai or booking one or what. I just, I want the specific, I want the transaction side. I want to see the prices. If I want to know more about general information, that's a different query. It's a different intent. Okay. Um, do we, have we dwelled in that? So, this one? Um, oh. You carry on to. So I don't remember this one, so I will, might well be um, saying what's said already. Okay. So, so I'm guessing this packages to buy is is for somebody who wants a package to Dubai, right? So I'm going to go on a limb here and say this is your actual main landing page for Dubai packages that you want to appear in the top five. So my first thing is, see, because you're always going, yeah, I've got backlinks, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, but I'm like, I'm like, okay, so what kind, how is this being supported internally in terms of content? Um, because you say you've gone out and got backlinks, but to me, you typically don't massively need, like, yeah, backlinks help, but it's not the be all and end all. Okay. Um, so I did a swipe site query of the site with Dubai because I want to get an idea on what Dubai kind of stuff is, uh, do you guys have? Um, do you know what I mean? To support this page, i.e., what are you in like from what what kind of stuff do you have to support and internally link through to your packages? So the first thing I found um, uh, that I clicked on was like Dubai Abu Dhabi tour itinerary, which is on your blog. Okay, that's one of the first results that came up. And I click through to that, and that's like Dubai places to visit. Oh no, hang on, sorry. Um, so the first one was customized Dubai. Okay, so it's your actual main page, customized Dubai packages. So in theory, that's our our target, right? Then I clicked on your next thing in the search results, which is places to visit in Dubai. I was just thinking, okay, great, they've got a nice little resource. I click on that, and it's a 404 page. Um, then we hit um, Dubai's seven-day itinerary. Um, and... You've got, like... <laughs> like within the first paragraph you've got one two three four five six seven eight nine 
in the first paragraph you've got nine internal links yeah going to other dubai content except i can't find and i'm still going through all these internal links and there's a lot but i can't find one yet actually going to what you're trying to do which is packages in dubai okay so so you've got all this dubai content and none of it is actually going to packages in dubai uh, i think this one's also did Ah, oh, no. Yes, I found one. I found one. Which is super cool to buy, like literally right at the end. Um, so I would revisit. <laughs> I would seriously revisit. Or like this, uh, I'm, I've given up counting. Like there is so much external links in there. Uh, sorry, um, internal links in there. Which in itself isn't a problem. But all of it is around stuff in Dubai, which you could quite easily do, and because you already have it in your related posts footer. Yeah. So you've got three in related posts. You could probably add, you know, a couple more if they're not featuring in the related posts, like uh, the, the, yeah. Um, and then, of course, the Dubai packages. For some reason, you, internally tracking utm tracking those like which is weird because you don't utm track anything else but i would certainly look at that i mean because that is way out of the top and i reckon you could really do something um you could really do something with your uh, you know uh, decent with with that dubai package if you looked at these internal links um like, for example, I found you also internally linked to pickyourtrail.com forward slash Dubai, which is a, there's no, there's no title tag on that. It's looking like it is just some kind of date kind of thing. So I don't know why you would internally link from a single, single thing for saying Dubai to this page, right? Okay, so that's another thing. You really need to, you really need to look at that. Um, I'm looking at the next one in the list, so which is uh, Dubai Abbey, Abbey Dhabi tour itinerary. Um, your first thing was obviously for Dubai, which you're using an anchor text to the previous one, which was forward slash Dubai. Now this one is to forward slash guides, forward slash Dubai. Uh, great. But uh, quick scroll through this, and that's a great resource you've got there. You know, you've got embassies, foods, drink, travel wisdom. I mean, flipping amazing stuff. Uh, I'm just going to do a view source here. Um, Oh, surprise, surprise. There's no link to packages forward slash Dubai. So you've got this entire resource going on. Um, all your things to see and do, blah, 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 shopping, desert safaris, you're internally linking to those blogs, which I don't really need, think you really actually need to do on your main guide page because that should be in all your kind of stuff um and interestingly your very first internal link on your dubai guides is to abu dhabi to your packages forward slash abu dhabi do you see what i'm getting here like your everything in your site that is around dubai and you've got a lot of it is not actually supporting your main package Dubai page.
I'm just scrolling down your Abu Dhabi tour itinerary post. And you have finally at the very bottom, I've got to do, you've, you've used a Dubai tour package where you're actually doing the internal link to packages Dubai. Um, but you don't need to like, for example, internally link, pick your trail to pick your trail to your homepage. I'm like, you, you, you yeah you've really um you really need to revisit all of this all of that content you need to you know you don't need all this crap around it um internally linking like 427 times in an article use your either you know use your um related itineraries or your related posts i um, actually notice your related posts don't seem to change so that's something you can need to fix that it actually shows more related posts to that article uh massively cut down on your uh internal links um to like in everything it's just crazy or increase your related articles yeah because the one link that you do want people to click on to your packages, um, etc., is so it's just hidden in there. Okay, uh, let me just pick one more. For example, five things to know before moving to Dubai in 2021. Oh, fuck you now. I think you're using a plugin for this, mate. You must be to do this because. <laughs> I've just gone on to the next one. Five things to know before moving to Dubai. First paragraph, lavish lifestyle in Dubai. You need to learn a few things. So what is that link in Dubai going to? That is going to forward slash guides the Maldives. Yeah. Okay. So I think we found your problem. Uh, you need to. Yeah, you really need to sort this out. Uh, and of course, you don't have in this post, you don't have anything going to your Dubai packages. I mean, your first thing here is, you know, go and visit the place at least before you're moving there, stay for a month or whatever. Um, and hey, check out our packages. Um, but you don't have anything to that. So I think we found your problem, you know. Um, yeah. You need to look at all your internal resources. Hey, I just found another 404, which is best places to stay in Dubai. That's a 404. Um, so you need to you need to look at all your internal resources. You certainly need to tidy them up big time. And then you need to understand what your actual game plan is. You can't be linking to Dubai to forward slash Dubai. You can't be internally linking Dubai to then forward slash guides Dubai. You can't be linking the word Dubai to the flipping Maldives, right? You need to plan out what you want to do, right? What are your top line pages? And then work your way through your content and uh, sort that all out, all your internal uh, linking. Tim, I'm done. Okay. I can't follow that. <laughs> right. So, right, let's move to number three. We've been going for uh, 24 minutes and we've answered two questions. El Bakito asks the question, it's titled, I will be linking them back to my site. Um, El Bakito said, yay or nay to the following idea. He says, I sell Kratom. It's super controversial, so I can't mention medical claims or consuming the thing. So I want to open up a blog site with cheap hosting 
and post content on Kratom uh, and make them all rank and I'll be linking back to my site. Um, that should be okay, right? Okay, so one, like as Richard points out, we're in a medical niche, okay? So any medical niche is going to be difficult, right? But <laughs> you, so think about what you're saying because you've said, right, so I want to create an external, uh, another blog site, which I'll create content on about Kratom or Kratom, or however you pronounce it, right? And I'm going to link back to my site. Right. So the way you're saying that straight away is, look, I'm trying to benefit my site by creating something else to do this, right? Now, you're in a medical niche, and what you need to do in any medical niche is you need to provide... Um, A, a, a sort of a, a better uh, um, I don't even know how the, you're going to be providing content but it needs to be content that um, is kind of going to stand up on it stand on its own so it's something that this medical niche should be quite happy to to back and it should be on the site right because Google's trying to understand with medical sites, they're trying to understand who's writing the content, not necessarily a, a doctor's name, for example, but who's writing the content in that sense, all the content, and does it stand up to scrutiny in a sense? Now, it's not like they're going to like peer review your content, but it's not like you can say in the first thing, um, um Kratom's going to like make me lose weight or something because they're going to expect to see the pros and cons on a very, on a, on a, um, you know, you can, you can sell something, but you can't just be, you know, all bells and whistles and, 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 and singing about this kind of stuff. Um, cause I suppose it's technically an opioid and, you know, um, so, you, you know, I think if you're going to publish content, it should be on your site and it should, you and because, and the, the better part is it's on your site and it can internally link. You don't really want to use a landing on an article, reading your article and having to like click through to a secondary site if it's your content. You should, you know, you should be happy to have that and host it on your site which is all going to work together for Google to make a decision on kind of what we do. Now, I've to obviously just searched crack, uh, just Kratom itself. Um, and the first thing I see is obviously the European drug, because I'm in the UK, the European sort of the, 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 the drug association, then drug abuse, dot gov would in the uk uh, then you know we see healthline webmed helio mayo clinic all the usuals wikipedia cleveland clinic Clin child mind mm, i suppose it's okay because it's all right it's dangerously addictive etc etc so you're going to be competing against all of these so the first thing i would recommend if you're going down content is one it's on your site and two, you know, you know what the con controversial kind of stuff is. Break this all down into sort of different topics. There's tea, there's different products, uh, different warnings. So you could be doing, um, you know, yes, warnings, how to mitigate against if you're going to be using this product. Uh, our products, you know, this, you know, only look for products which are X, Y, and Z. Be wary of X, Y, and Z products because, etc. Um, capsules, like who, you know, what is the tea good for? Um, 
And in other sense, it can't all be too bad because I see Google's taking ads for um, Kraton. So do you see what I mean? Um, I would also look at, hang on, I've, uh, let, let, let's actually, I'm sorry, I'm going to cost this guy a click, but I just want to see because they specifically state Ah, uh, they're in Sweden, but in the in the meta, it's interesting. Trusted third party lab tested sources, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, you probably want to. You know, it's for the heart. There's warnings. There's withdrawal symptoms. Shit, Jesus, this stuff could be quite hectic. Um, these are kind of things I think you need to. Split it all out in your planning of content so that you can start going down all of this. Like, for example, if you look at, I mean, I've got um, in the medical field, I've got a vascular surgeon. On every piece of content that they do, you, you're not saying use, uh, use me, I'm the best, even though he's one of the like handful of certified to, to do this type of surgery in the UK. But even in all his content, it's still right. These are the outcomes, but these are also potential risks as with any medical procedure. And I think you need to start being, if you're going to go down this road, I think you need to uh, really break it down and provide information, like real solid information based on your company's research into this kind of stuff um uh, like in just some of the ads that i've seen it's you know independently produced lab tested products etc etc um so you're providing that kind of um peace of mind to 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 the re to the reader but then you are still providing all the information of potential problems right um yeah, that's my only suggestion on that. And uh, yeah, good luck with it. Yeah, I agree. I don't think, I don't think setting up a sort of a cheap and quick blog is going to do you any favors. And if you have resources to do that, uh, put it, expend that energy and resource on your own site, because you know it's already a very tough um, area, and. You really have to make the site um, sort of credible, and that's not an easy task. And I don't think you should be splitting your energies into something that's not really going to work. Thank you, Mrs. Taki. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, David. All right, let's roll on down the line towards number four uh, it said it's title i was wondering if he could help me um and sophie lindvold said um hello i was wondering if you could help me or potentially guide me to somewhere that might have the answer to my dumb seo question here's the situation a company has been working in a specific industry for a few years and has accumulated a lot of articles from publications within this specific in industry when searching for this uh, company the, these uh, in, in industry specific articles come up on uh, google searches and uh, google news um, now the company wants to expand to a new market and has started to get articles published for publications that focus on a different industry. However, let's not type the exact title of the articles. The articles do not show up on Google searches or Google News. They are about a month old. I'm starting to wonder whether Google has pigeonholed the company to only be viewed when searching for keywords and articles within its traditional industry. Um, if that's the case, what SEO strategies can the company take to make sure that it'll be visible when featuring in content, uh, focusing on the new market? 
I have to admit, so, since then, thank you for your help. You're welcome. So keep creating content and interlink and make sure that, you know, you, you're interlinking um, uh, in between your content. Um, uh, basically, essentially, you've created a new site because it's a completely different separate genre. Um, and you need to build up some form of internal authority uh, because you're going to publish something now and essentially you're going to be way down the line. So you keep building on your content strategy. You, you keep enhancing your, your content that you're providing and internally linking between them so that it's not just being lost in the, the ether. Um, they each provide value to one another um, and it, it will take time. Um, so, uh, you know, you think of it as a new site and typically, oh, I'm going to say typically, well, it kind of depends because the ones I'm thinking of are, yeah, you know, typically with a new site and you start producing content, um, they normally hang around way, way down on, you know, page two, page three, page four. Um, anywhere up to around. And it's not really a time frame because each sort of thing is different on, you know, the type of content you're producing, uh, sort of. The, but it, it can be months. And I'm saying even upwards of half a year to a year. Um, I mean, especially now at the minute with Google um, and indexing stuff, uh, I've got a new site where they haven't even bothered indexing. I think there's 44 pieces of content now and they still haven't indexed three quarters of it. They know it's there, it's in Search Console, it's discovered, uh, but it's not being indexed yet. Um, so these are, this is another thing to take into account, which is a new thing going on. And um, uh, so that's another thing where, you know, even if it is indexed, it's, you know, even if it's not indexed, it's still. So yeah, it's going to take time. You need to build up that kind of perceived authority around it uh, and the content uh, in order for it to start working for you. Thank you, Tim. Do we have any more on this one? Okay, let's go to our next, which is uh, from Khalid Asele, uh, it's a, it's a uh, question titled, uh, there is about a 45% match between the two articles. Uh, Khalid said, uh, hello everyone, a quick silly question. We're writing several articles that compare different tools. These articles are targeted towards um, uh, below, below um, the fold um, searches. Um, for example, tool A versus tool B, tool A versus tool C, tools A, B and C are in the same space and uh, compete with each other. <clears throat> Since we have already written about tool A in the first article, we're, we're taking the same text and using it, using it in the second article. We do a little modification to the text, but I would say that 90% of the text is the same. So if you compare these two articles, there's about a 45% match uh, between them. A, a couple of questions. Uh, do you see any potential issues from a pure uh, search engine optimization perspective? And two, would it be better to write a single article, A versus B versus C? Um. I think you're getting yourself tied up in keywords and key phrases here uh, rather than actually providing something that's useful to your readers. Um, I'm wondering why you would write um, articles that say the same thing 
over and over again. Um, you know, if if these are if these are the same people who are going to be reading this stuff, then you're definitely off the rails. Um, well, I think, I think what, what he's trying mean. to do is, yeah, what I think he's trying to doing is because the actual tool A is still the same tool A for each thing. That's why he's using that same, let's say, half of that same copy is exactly the same. I think, why don't you look at it this way, Khalid? Create an um well, no, create the piece of copy that you need to create once not three times use it yeah. once not three times i think or, is what about trying to say. yeah or what about this create your comparison article right so you've got your tool a your tool B content, your tool C content, your tool D content. Um, and then possibly have a, I don't know, you're going to need to speak to developer somewhere along the line. So you've got, so you literally not creating multiple of these comparisons. You've got your tool A content, tool B, tool C, tool D on the same page. And then with some nice, I don't know how you're going to do it, just speak to the developer that when somebody hovers a box or something down, you know, they scroll down and then something pops up going, this one's uh, non-ferrous, this one's not non-ferrous. And then you just hover down and it pulls it all down and then the ticks appear kind of thing. Um, and I guess that would be done in like a comparison type or underneath all of tool a b c d just do an old-fashioned freaking um table like instead of getting clever with my idea which i thought of but put a put a proper table in there and then you can cover individual unique features where the user can then actually literally compare them right because if you think from a user's point of view what david was saying is how does the user view that many different pieces on all the same tool right it's just going to be a pain in the ass but if you put that all onto one page right you're going to benefit from all of it from tool a tool b tool c tool d is all on there then you've got your comparison chart compare it and then you can actually you can even then do your physical you know your keyword tool a versus tool b put your diagram in and take out you put your complete little tick yes no yes no and it does no uh, this one's commercial this one's not commercial then your next thing so the user doesn't have to go anywhere else you've got all that content on there you've got your tool a versus tool b you've got your tool a versus tool c you've got tool d versus tool c the user can make an informed decision on one page right You've got all your content on one page. You've got all your keywords that you're trying to target on one page, right? Um, and of course, you've got all your tools on the same page, which the user can click through to purchase, right? Then, so I'm just saying, uh, like, you can thank me for the brilliant, brilliant freaking idea um i take you know coming up to christmas i enjoy trembury or uh, um anything uh, at that point you know but i think that's going to be far better for you uh in the long run and then you can do supporting content for each of those tools and of course you can say hey you want to see a comparison so you can you can you can really drive this comparison guide page all in one mega super duper thing from a lot of internal resources anyway and you know you provide an info they can make an informed decision with all the info on one and they just need to click through and purchase the product thank you tim 
Okay. Let's roll. Uh, if there's any, no more for this one, we can go to the next. Okay. So that Rayid Adawa asks a question, would you accept a backlinking exchange from a relevant website? Um, okay. Hey, so that said, hey, SES, um, would you accept a backlinking exchange from a relevant niche website of medium domain authority but very small traffic? I checked this website in SEMrush and noticed that it has about 28,000 backlinks, but its rankings greatly dropped over time to almost no traffic. I guess this is due to low quality links. So the question is, would you accept a backlink exchange from a relevant website? So, like, this kind of shit just burns my ass these days, right? The whole point of, like, a link is literally traffic, yeah? What is the freaking point of having a link somewhere that nobody follows through and nobody purchases from you? It's freaking irrelevant. So, so that would a user from that whatever site that is would he if he read that piece of content we still haven't even like gone down the road of um we haven't even gone down the road of of like how good is this con what is the content about you know etc etc and 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 uh you know would it actually even convert traffic to you if the answer is no bog it like I've, I've probably said this a million times and everyone here is going to roll their eyes. If your product was freaking amazing and it got featured in product of the year, engineering product of the year in Forbes, this product is going to revolutionize engineering because it's got a twisted head, nut revolving screw head. Okay. They don't link out to you, but they mention your company and your product right? You then sell a hundred thousand units of your nut headed screw revolving anti twist lock screw. <laughs> there wasn't even a link, but you sold a million units. Do you really give a flying continental if that was a backlink or not? Or are you going to sit and go, oh, I didn't get a backlink, but you sold a million units. You see what I'm saying here? If you think about links, right, you should be thinking about will something there, if somebody gets hold of you and goes, we'd love for you to write a piece on this. And yeah, look, of course, because you're writing a piece, we'll attribute you. And you'll go, hang on, but I do twisty, twisty screw head sideways anti-locking nuts. And you sell Crocs. No, that's not a good fit for my product or me or my time. It's not going to do jack shit. It's not going to convert. It's not going to help me sell. Just just really start thinking about the stuff. If you're going to, you know, think of a link as in what's it going to do for you, not for the website. Just forget, oh, page rank, page juice, page freaking whatever. Will it help you sell something? And start looking at it that way. Thank you, Tim. All right. Um, and let's move on to number seven on our run list. We've survived so far. Um, Amir Mimud asks a question title why uh shop shopify websites not good in terms of um seo it's a long time since i've uh, well it's a while since i've 
had a client with a, a Shopify website, but um, my feeling about Shopify, unless they've changed what they do, is that they are better than many. So I wouldn't say they weren't good in terms of SEO. Um, so I don't know where that's coming from. Or maybe they've managed to mess up their SEO in the intervening time since I've optimized a, a Shopify um, <laughs> website. Um, there's a, a there's a conversation going on here, and I've managed to corpse on it. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I'm, I don't agree with this. Um, I think that uh, I think Shopify are pretty good. It's like anything you see from SEO. It's like in the very beginning, so Shopify, I don't think you could add, for example, product structured data. And it was like, oh my God, NOS is a piece of shit. But you know, you couldn't you couldn't do a lot of shit with Wix and you couldn't do a lot of this with and all of these CMSs are are are, are, are working on it. Um they're all employing some pretty good people over the years who are all doing their bit to try and, you know, build it up. You ask, and, and, and this is the hilarious thing. You look at 90% of Google support docs out there, support guides, docs, whatever, right? Um, uh, Google's SEO is a crock. And when I say in terms of SEO, just basic stuff, titles, uh, you know, proper nav and things like this. Uh, and Google, and if you look in the job thing, Google even hires SEOs to actually work on their own stuff because not everyone knows everything. And these are, a CMS is not inherently there in terms of, uh, to build something for the SEO community. The, uh, the CMS is there is to build something for as an e-commerce plat platform for a business. Um, and that's how they all originally start out. And then they will evolve over time. So, um, you know, these things will evolve. They have their support channels also. So if there's something inherently unique that you need to do or what to do, I see it all the time in different threads. Um, you know, someone's like, uh, someone's taken on a client in Magento and people are like, holy shit, how do I get this done? And you see it all the time, like people going, hey, uh, like SEOs in different threads going, how do I sort this out? Because not everybody, you know, unless you specifically only ever work in these things, you're not going to figure all the bits and bobs out. And, you know, oh, well, it's this, that, this, this is how you can bypass that or get that done. And of course, all the other people also work on stuff like that. So, yeah, I agree with Dave. I don't think it's like bad. I just think, you know, these things take time to develop in terms of what you're actually looking for. Thank you, Tim. No brilliant answer. Okay, let's go to number eight. Uh, Oliver Harrison asks, is it a good idea to get a backlink from a news website? Um, generally, yes. I'd um, love to know yeah, this. Yeah, I'd love to, yeah. I'm just trying to get him before Tim let, lets loose again. <laughs> Oh, one of his famous tirades. We can't have two of them uh, in this short session or else his heart might give out. Um, poor chap. Um, but, yeah, um, if you can get one, um, if you can get them doing it uh, legitimately, um, if you can get them to write about you and there are a good, um, a good respect, respected and respectful website, Yes, um, if it's some dodgy outfit that's trying to flog you a, a uh, uh, an article written uh, for uh, a certain number of dollars, uh, run. So yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, it's very rare that news outlets actually link out to anything these days. Very, 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 very rare. 
um, even when you've compiled all the data for them, for, for them in order to write their comparison, like a lot of your stuff out there is actually created, you know, like someone will go, studies reveal size six shoes, uh, size six sh shoe ladies get more sex, right? You see all this crap all the time, even in mainstream news, because all of the mainstream media also tend to have their female sections and, you know, this kind of stuff. And all of that, all of that story is not created by journalists. 99% of it was created by SEOs who compile the data based upon their niche and their industry and stats and surveys put it into a nice package and send it out to uh, journalists who then spin it in 14 different ways and you get 14 different articles from it, but you don't get 14 links. Um, yeah, you don't get 14 links because they are, they will mention you, like they will say, um, Oliver Harris, I'm gonna, I don't know what you what you do, but Oliver Harrison sounds like tweed jackets. So I'm gonna say Oliver Harrison tweed jackets research, and they won't actually link to you. Ah, uh, sorry, I gotta take this call back. Yeah, um, Tim's taking a call at the moment. Yeah, so what Tim is saying, it's actually quite difficult to to get a, a link from a news website, um, which kind of links in with what I was saying, which is that um, if you have got an opportunity for a link, you need to look very long and hard at the legitimacy of that link um, and the legitimacy of the, the news website. Um, because um, links from decent news websites are worth so much, um, then it's very, very difficult to get one. Yeah, and <clears throat> even if there is a link, it may be no follow. Um, so, but I think it does feed into the whole um, reputation side of things in general sense, not in not specific in SEO terms, but in terms of um, profile and um, credibility, that if you're mentioned in um, a national press, a reputable national press, for instance, and I think that does help to raise your pro profile and credibility in a way that, um, in a way that is quite valuable than thinking in terms of links or not. Yeah, yeah, I, I think the I think you're absolutely right. There's uh, we, we're back to the idea of folks focusing on links, which uh, Tim is so happy with. Um, but no, it, it's it's old SEO thinking. Um, what what Master is saying there is 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 this is related to your brand. If you can get mentions in the mail online god forbid um and the new york times and whatever else um it will start helping or it will help your your brand um if there's if your brand is particularly recognizable then there's more chance that people will start making branded searches on you and those are a lot easier to to rank for so it's a kind of roundabout thing, getting back to search and SEO. Um, but it, it's not through links, it's through brand awareness. Yeah, I mean, if if you're pinkfluffyelephants.com and if there is a feature article saying that mm. you know, fluff, fluffy elephants are the thing to get this Christmas, 
And if your brand is mentioned, even if there's no link, that's going to be a huge boon. Jim, uh, can we wake up, please, Jim? Wakey, wakey. Hello, Jim. Jim? Good, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry we were so boring, Jim. Uh, look, no, it's not that. It's, it's just that I've had a, a really uh, uh, big day. I didn't get a chance to get my nap in. Um, and uh, it's because my eldest son is heading off uh, early in the morning and I had to coordinate the puppy coming here and oh, heavens above. Anyway, let's get to look at number nine. Uh, Yuray E. Falcon um, is in need of urgent advice. Um, and it's titled, I read that it doesn't matter to Google anymore. He's, Yuray said, I'm building a website for a customer using the new Google Sites, which I personally love for simple sites. But I've just realized it has nearly zero SEO tools. Um, I'm unable to enter site descriptions, meta tags, nothing. Doing a bit of research, I read that the reason behind this is that uh, all of that doesn't matter to Google anymore. All Google cares about is content. And this CMS, that being a Google tool, it appears to this principle. I call bullshit. Um, given, given that um, search engine optimization is a key pillar for my customers' business, uh, this makes me a bit afraid. Uh, and at the same time, if Google says descriptions, meta tags, and they don't matter anymore, I guess I shouldn't worry, should I? Anyone come across a similar experience? Any thoughts on this? I see Tim Kepper uh, answered this uh, in in the... Uh... Yeah, I thought he was talking about business sites. I completely forgot that Google actually has their own free Google Sites crap. Um, and then year eight doesn't... He just says, yeah, those are the old ones. No, those are business dot sites, which are completely independent of Google Sites. So... Uh, um, yeah, look, Google's Google. Google doesn't know about SEO. That's their CMS. It's like other CMSs out there. Uh, you still need to optimize. And yeah, unfortunately, their CMS is mm, pretty much worse than, than others. Uh, I'm sure there must be some things on there on what you can do in terms of optimizing them. But yeah, if, if that's going to be your you know, using a free site for for a client. Mm. Yeah, but like that, that, you know, they have, all have their own limitations. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I would use it for a, for a client, um, maybe for my local golf club or something. Um, bridge club or whatever but um i think that um it's it's probably been um put together many years ago by uh one part of google that knows nothing about seo there are so many different parts of google and they as we know they don't talk to each other and i don't think you can read into the fact that there's various bells and whistles missing from, from this tool that uh, the SEO uh, part of Google or the um, or the search part of Google, shall we say, um, has had any input at all on it. Um, someone has come up with the idea that they have to have this, this, this product, this tool, and it's been built and it probably hasn't been touched for 10 years or something. I mean, the, yeah, like the, the, the free business dot site for, you know, GM, attached to GMB profiles. There, there's nothing. So like, even in the very beginning, the, 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 the type, the header you could add, 
didn't it didn't even end up in an h1 and i think it was a couple of years later before maybe someone even who 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 because obviously programmers uh in google shift like every couple of years so they they never have the same people working on the same stuff and it took a couple of years before they actually you know made it an h1 and i think the summary header an h2 oh, for fuck's sake anyway yeah so that's about it Mm -hmm. Good to be busy. I, I think that someone phoning up offering to sell him a link. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so I think All right. I, I agree with um, Tim and David. I personally wouldn't use um, Google Sites for commercial purposes. And um, yeah, I think you're reading too much into what Google does or doesn't uh, from using Google Sites. Mm. So, in short, I would worry <laughs> if I were you, because I don't think I don't think Google Science is the um, appropriate platform for the purposes that you're trying to out outline. Yeah, if if you're if you're charging money for this, um, I would. Um, I wouldn't feel right about using Google Sites. Exactly, and, and, and it, it just betrays the, that um, it betrays the the, the um, developer um, just, just with a, a lack of um, experience. I think Tim's given us um, most of his answer for this one here, and. Um, so I, I guess we can um, m m move on from this question. Yeah, the the answer is um, it doesn't mean that uh, that these things don't matter to Google, and we also say don't use Google Sites. Use something decent and professional. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's um, click this button, and, and I'm pretty sure I'll, I know what I will, I will see here. Yes, it's thank you for watching time. Um, we'll be back uh, next week. Oh, no, we won't. Will we? Um, next week will be the uh, 24th, the New Year's Eve. So I, I it, think... it will be the 23rd, um, Christmas Eve Eve. Um, for us, um, but for Jim, you know, it'd be the... Oh, for, yeah. for yeah. Jim, of course. Yes, it will be, won't it? Yes. Um, I cannot guarantee to be here next week, so uh, I don't know whether that makes uh, any difference to your, uh, your decision-making. Um, I'm... Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um... Anyway, um, look, um, we, we, I, I think I'll, I'll say that we won't be back uh, next next week, but we more certainly will be uh, the week after. I think um, that would be the um, the thirty first. 31st of December. Anyway, look, I, I can't go without thinking. Um, did you want to say something, David? No, no. no. I can't go without thanking you guys for the, the, your efforts, uh, um, both now and, and um, throughout the year. Um, and uh, I'll also thank... Uh, the people who uh, answer questions uh, throughout the week on the WCA Questions Facebook group. And um, yeah, that's, um, that's it. Thank, thank you for watching. And we'll see you next week. We'll try and figure out the right button to click here. Well, we could say Merry Christmas, couldn't we? Oh, yeah. Happy Christmas. Uh,
May, may, the, may the seafood be cold. <laughs> and the turkey be um, better than it was last time you ate it. 